Hey friends, welcome back to the channel with more Westworld. This is season two, episode one. And last season, last season was amazing. Uh, we had Maeve just being breaking out, and then at the end, just turning back and going back in. We had the hosts essentially just waking up. Um, Dolores wound up killing Ford after we found out that she killed Arnold as well. Just twists on twists on twists. I'm really happy with the way they built these layers and layers of clues and hints and this really big puzzle that you just kind of figured out bits and pieces of throughout the series. And yeah, um, now that the hosts have gained sentience and they don't have anybody who can turn their emergency backup plans off like uh, Ford can't, could, um, yeah, I'm just curious to see what they're going to do going forward, what kind of story they're going to tell. Anyway, guys, uh, if you want to watch the full reaction or you want to catch episodes a week early, you can check out Patreon in the link in the description below. Otherwise, we're going to get started. I dreamt I was on an ocean with you and the others on the distant shore. What's it mean? Dreams don't mean anything, Dolores. They're not real. What is real? That which is irreplaceable. That answer doesn't seem to satisfy you. Because it's not completely honest. Uh, you frighten me sometimes, Dolores. <laughs> Why on earth would you ever be frightened of me? Was this a flash forward? I don't. Whoa. Is this now? Oh man, we're getting more timey wimey stuff. Hey! Hey, get up! Get your hands where I can see them! Whoa, whoa, whoa. You gonna shoot the boss? The boss. Bet you're pretty fucking out of sorts right now. Shoot him, over my dead body! The officer was saying. I know what he said. Have them sign an NDA and then please escort them off my fucking island. Yes, sir. Mr. Lowe, good to see you. You're executing them? Some say you destroy your enemy by making them your friend. I'm more of a literal person. I'm here because as far as we know, this is where most of the board was when the incident began. However, communications have been down for two weeks, so we're largely in the dark. And that's two not a weeks. position that about? I have no fucking clue. I don't think I didn't notice that they did this scene with a native. According to the timestamp, oh, this was recorded 11 days and 9 hours ago. I told you, friend. Not all of us deserve to make it to the valley beyond. Do you know where you are? Please. Please. You're in a dream. The rancher's daughter looks to see the beauty in you. <laughs> Possibilities. Wow. Under all these lives I've lived, something else has been growing. And I have one last role to play. Myself. It was just the game. We're begging. Can't you see? We're sorry. It doesn't look like anything to me. Oh. <laughs> doesn't look like anything to me. You pretend to be dead. This is what you wanted. What the fuck is happening here? Where's QA? You guys have always played fast and loose with this place. Let me tell you something. By the time my lords get. Yeah. 
to functions. Forks and the flesh, wrapped in fear. I the think you've got enough now, darling, don't you? <sighs> it's like the inmates are running the asylum. Maeve? Yeah. Don't be jealous. I killed myself getting this level of security clearance. <laughs> Multiple times. Uh, I actually enjoy seeing Sizemore just confused, lost, panicked. Hey, you, you can't leave me here. I, I can help you. You're looking for something. That whatever it is, you're, you're not going to find it with that map. It's outdated. <laughs> I feel like nobody probably probably nobody likes it, right? I don't think I've actually gotten a single comment about Sizemore. Wait, I, I can still help. I know the park a bit. Uh, can I? Can I see your paper? <sighs> She's still there. Who? My daughter. Oh my God. You, you, your daughter. She's. She's just a story. She's not real. the walls with your outsized personality would that be real i think he was scare roused for a bit you're going to take me to my daughter what i tell you we're saved are you so sure about that Even be dressed as if they're human. <laughs> These are robots. If you try something like that again, I will relieve you of your most precious organ and feed it to you. Mm. Though it won't make much of a meal. I wrote that line for you. There you are. You best an army, and all you can think about is indulging your vices. Ever the scoundrel. <laughs> oh, thank God. <laughs> oh, the God. <laughs> what about him? We'll keep him for now. DNA sniffer, just so you don't run into any problems inside. Probably. You read your DNA? It knows you're not a threat. <laughs> that was creepy as hell. I was like, did I see something move? Oh, whoa, whoa. <sighs> Waiting package. You sent your fucking package. Are we logging records of guests' experiences and their DNA? We're not having that conversation, Bernard. They were expecting a delivery from us to the mainland. A host that was supposed to arrive yesterday. Until they get it, we can all forget about seeing any rescue planes. Are you lost? Uh, Roberts. Oh, did Robert, did Ford leave anything behind? Of the himself? stakes are real. No. You're in my game. Congratulations, William. Thank you. Even now, you're all still talking code? Everything is code here, William. You know that more than anyone. Guess I don't need you anymore, Robert. That kid actor. You, it felt like he had uh, shades of Anthony Hopkins, honestly. How's it? Acting. Strip. <laughs> right now, in front of. Yes. Now. No. All the way. All of it. Shaking mighty hard. 
Oh, he's fixing himself. Symptoms of critical corruption. Loss of motor functions. Cognitive dissonance. Time slippage. Aphasia. Time Loss slippage. Get a bit better gonna move on. Something wrong, Bernard? Location query complete. I got him. <laughs> oh. Now he's here. Whoa. How the fuck? That's definitely not supposed to be here. A tiger? He's never had a stray across park borders. Park six? There's at least six? All the hosts are clustered together. What the hell are they up to? What? I think we found the hosts. Can you tell me what happened? I killed them. You killed them? What? What? Oh, Alright, interesting start to the next season. I'm not entirely sure what kind of story they're telling, starting to tell here. Uh, feels like they're laying foundation for something, though. No sign of Elsie, since we didn't see her die on screen. Uh, very much doubt that she's dead. And um, Armistice, we saw the post credit scene last time. She just ripped her arm off to be able to escape. Uh, didn't see her either. Who else haven't we seen? <laughs> Freaking Sizemore. We haven't seen Felix or Sylvester, the cats. All right, so this was the first part of season two, first episode. And it moved us forward a little bit, answered some of my questions. Um, it posed some new questions as well, though they're not as fascinating and as gripping as the ones from Season 1. But we do meet Carl Strand, head of operations. He's kind of debriefing, trying to get information from Bernard as well. And uh, just trying to figure out how everything is working out so far. And yeah, uh, it's actually very impressive what Ford has done with the hosts because he made everyone know that the hosts have revolted and gained sentience while still keeping the identity of undercover hosts a secret. Like, Bernard is a big one, and I'm wondering if there are any other humans that are secretly hosts still. Uh, I'm gonna rule out Elsie because she was kidnapped by Bernard. Um, if she was an actual host, Ford could have just programmed her to do what he wanted and wouldn't need Bernard to kidnap her since nobody else was watching that. Um, so. I'm pretty safe, I think I'm safe in assuming that she is not a host. Uh, Tessa, uh, sorry, Charlotte Hale, not Th Tessa Thompson. Charlotte Hale is most likely human given that Bernard doesn't recognize her as a host and had to hide from her while he fixed himself up. Um, the thing is, if Bernard actually isn't able to tell the difference between who is a host and who isn't, what if Carl Strand is a host, uh, the head of operations? Um, and who else in operations, who else among the Delos staff could possibly be hosts? Um, and what about Ashley Stubbs? I'm not entirely sure about him either. I wasn't sure if he was making a joke when he said that his knowledge about astronomy was part of his backstory, or it was either that or it was his cornerstone, but then his knowledge turned out to be wrong about Orion's belt, and it's very clear. You, you can, once you see... Orion's belt. It's very obvious what is and isn't Orion's belt. So he hasn't done anything really suspicious, but I'm open to the idea that he's a host. Um, and oh yeah, what happened to him? I just remembered at the end of last season, he was surrounded by Ghost Nation. What happened after that? Um, so he's either a host or he's very, very capable and very dangerous um, to be able to evade ghost nation multiple ghost nation uh hosts 
And yeah, anyway, Charlotte leads Bernard to this facility where there are hosted drones. And I caught that they were like taking the DNA of actual humans entering the park. So are they actually making host clones of people? That's what I assumed Ford was going to do with Teresa last season, but that's not what wound up happening. Um, but we do know that Ford created Bernard as a copy of Arnold, and Arnold created, obviously, his Ford's family as a gift to him. Um, but yeah, this facility seems to be doing, uh, seems to be capable of doing the same thing, except with all the visitors, since they took DNA from them, which, yeah, if you want to take over society completely, that's what you want to do, right? Presumably, visitors are some of the most powerful and influential people in the world, given that they can afford to visit a place that costs 40000 a day. Um, kill them, replace them with hosts, and you can control the world, essentially, right? Um, but yeah, seems odd that Ford would set the hosts from Westworld upon the world without having this project be done. So unless there are actually already a lot of host clones like ready to go, ready to replace humans um, in the real world. But yeah, um, I'm curious why they... I, I'm, I'm wondering if they have any test that they can do to uh, figure out if someone is a host or not. Um, I mean, they changed them so completely that there are no... I don't think there's anything mechanical mechanical left in them. Um, from what we've seen, it's just their insides are pretty much the same as humans, except for up here in the brain. Um, they have... It seems they cut open the skull, the brain looks like a brain, and then underneath it there's like a capsule uh, that's probably very, very sturdy. Uh, I've, I've been reading a webcomic called Questionable Content for very, very long time, maybe close to a decade. It's been going for like 17 years, I think. And, um, yeah, I think th there was a s idea in there that the AI have a chip in there that could withstand like a tank rolling over it or something so that uh, their very consciousness of the AI are extremely, extremely well protected and cannot come close to being destroyed. So it seems like what's in the host's skulls are probably similar to that. I don't know how close they are to indestructible as it is in the comic but um it doesn't look metallic so it wouldn't show up on a metal detector and i wonder i wonder what kind of tester is to try to figure out if someone is a host or a human obviously they haven't even thought really of um thought that far ahead because they can pretty they feel like they can pretty much tell who's a host and who isn't based on their attire um, again, they're not aware of Bernard. Um, but yeah, Bernard, uh, speaking of Bernard, we skipped two, almost two full weeks later, and there is no sign of Charlotte Hale when he's found, so definitely want to learn what happened to her. Did he wind up killing her? And given the likelihood of that facility creating host duplicates of visitors, the next time we see Charlotte, is it going to be sh the host, a host Charlotte, or is it going to be Charlotte Hale... Uh, the human. And yeah, at the end, with the whole huge lake full of hosts, Bernard said he's killed everyone there. Um, why? Why would he do that? Uh, so I mentioned earlier in the episode when they were in Sweetwater about like, what if there are hosts that are just pretending to be dead and are actually still functional? So um, what if they can just get back up and attack everybody? Kind of in like some or all of the Resident Evil games and the Dead Space games, where you'll see, like, corpses everywhere. Like, you're entering some place where there are presumably dead people or dead zombies, um, and you're just like, are those dead already or not? And if you're trying to save bullets, you try to, like, tiptoe around them <laughs> and hope they don't jump up and scare the heck out of you. Um, but the smart thing to do if you have some extra bullets is to just shoot them in the head and see if there's any reaction. Uh, Resident Evil 2 Remake is a little weird given that uh, headshot isn't an instant kill. So sometimes you shoot them, shoot them in the head, and they start moving again. They're like trying to get up. I'm like, I shot you in the head. Anyway, that's a whole different story. Um, but yeah, it makes me wonder if all of the hosts in the lake are dead or not. Um... Because 
yeah, they, they could very easily be playing dead. Oh, we didn't really see... I don't think we saw any wounds on them. And uh, I'm actually curious... Because they are designed to match the physical... Um, they're, they're designed to match the physical response of human beings. But, like, so if you drown some of them, they're going to act like they're drowning. But if you tell them to pretend to be dead... Do they, they don't need oxygen to survive, do they? Um, I don't know. So Westworld could possibly become Zombie World or something like that. That would be really interesting. Um, but yeah, that was... Bernard's story is fascinating. Charlotte Hale's story is fascinating. I do want to learn more. Um, but yeah, we also have... Okay, last season, Sizemore, Lee Sizemore. He wasn't one of my favorite characters at all. He was kind of like an afterthought. Um... He was, as Eleven from Stranger Things would say, a mouth breather. But yeah, this episode kind of really endeared him to me. Like, he was so hilariously out of his league, uh, almost killed by the cannibal, only to be saved by Maeve. Another saved by Maeve. Uh, I have a feeling he's going to just wind up in a hor more horrible situation later on. Um, yeah, and then the way he tried to signal that Maeve was a host to like the security team, some of them might even be dressed as humans. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. <laughs> uh, looking at Maeve like that, trying to get her caught. But yeah, she takes them all out. Um, keeps them alive. Maeve. And then uh, she goes looking for Hector. Um, I think I thought we were done with him after last season, but we found him again. And yeah, um... It's interesting that their their relationship is interesting because they showed affection for each other while they were in Westworld when they were being controlled, but now that they're free, there's still remnants of that, and they show affection for each other. Um, but yeah, she's looking for her daughter. Uh, meanwhile, William, uh, freaking, he's playing the game for real and only has one life less left, essentially. So one slip up and he is done. But it looks like he's really, really enjoying himself. So, yeah, funny to see him get up from beneath a bunch of dead bodies. And so I wonder if he pulled the trick I mentioned the hosts might be doing. Uh, I wonder if he just laid down, pretended to be dead, and then waited for morning and got up later when it was safer. Because um, it didn't seem like he was so injured that he passed out. It looked like he actually just like decided to lay down for a nap. Um, though that is pretty psychotic if he decided to just, I don't know, cover himself with, like, dead bodies and be like, all right, I'll just wait for this to pass so I can survive. Um, though, yeah, it's pretty ingenious. Uh, he comes across a young, the young Ford, and at the end of the last season, I was like, yeah, maybe Ford is still alive in the young Ford host. And uh, he put on a really creepy voice to talk with William, uh, tells him that the maze wasn't for William, but this, this is, and sends him on a mission to find the door. Um... This is the game that uh, Ford made for him. So Ford seems to have actually enjoyed William's presence, or he, he must have at least been very appreciative of him for buying out the park and helping it survive when it was on the brink of bankruptcy after Arnold committed suicide, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, William just killed him afterwards, though. And I don't know that it's that important, because Ford can presumably still live in the code, live on in the code, as Arnold does, but even though that's the case, it's hard not to feel like the further Ford is removed from having a physical presence in the world, uh, the freer the hosts are going to be as a whole. Uh, I don't know, really have anything to back that up, but logically, I mean, just not logically, I think intuitively or um, just my gut feels like, yeah, the less physical presence he has, the less... Um, control he has over the hosts even though like technically i don't think that's the case but anyway uh we have dolores going around just killing everybody um leading teddy around and i think it wasn't until i saw teddy and his reaction to her killing everybody that there was a possibility that even though humans treated the hosts as non-sentient beings sex toys and they humili humiliated them, tortured them, murdered them. 
There might be hosts out there who will gain sentience who aren't down for the extinction of the human race, and who might even look positively upon humans as a whole. Um, so I'm wondering how, if that is the case, and how that will play out, because uh, Dolores is clearly out for blood. Maeve doesn't seem like she's out for blood. She seems like she's out for freedom um, and for her own thing. She doesn't seem to want to, like, just kill everybody to get... I mean, she's killing everybody to get out, but she doesn't want to... Her end goal isn't to take over all of humanity and, and either kill all of them or enslave them. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting if Teddy breaks off into his own little thing and just, like, decides to fight against Dolores. Um, he was programmed to be at odds with Wyatt at one point, so... Yeah, he's following Dolores slash Wyatt. Uh, that's really, really a fascinating... Um, relationship as well, and yeah, um, I feel like there are a lot of questions I have about individual characters and their storylines, but I'm wondering what the big puzzle they have for us to solve this uh, is this season. Like, I feel like I have a pretty solid grasp on everything that's happening, and for the things I don't know exactly, I feel like the answers are going to be more straightforward than not. Um, so yeah, I'm curious what they're gonna do to uh, make us really like lose our minds and be like so super confused and like break our brains. Cause yeah, there were definitely some episodes after um, after which I was just like, "What the heck is going on?" I was just like going one way, couldn't couldn't figure out how to answer one question, and it just kept branching into multiple different things. Whereas this, I'm just like, "Oh, like what is the answer?" and I don't think that there that there are that many different um, interesting possibilities. Um, we did get the confirmation that there are at least six parks, and so we saw a Japanese park, and obviously we have Westworld. Um, I mentioned I would love a Jurassic Park park, but uh, it I, I, last time I said that I said it might run into copyright issues, but people have since commented saying that the author who wrote Westworld actually wrote Jurassic Park as well. So that's a super... Uh, that's actually a definite possibility, right? And so, yeah, that's three. Uh, I think I mentioned last time, like, a Wizarding World, but it can't be Harry Potter because I'm sure that was not the same author, author obviously. Um, but yeah, who else would people like to play as? Like, what worlds would people like to explore? Um, I think a Game of Thrones world... For, for if it was if Westworld took place in our reality, uh, I don't know if Game of Thrones exists in this show. Um, though obviously same world HBO, not same world, same network. Network, it's not TV, it's HBO. Um, I feel like they would probably have the rights to HBO uh, to Game of Thrones to use it as a world in Westworld. Um, like even in Euphoria, the show uh, I reacted to a while back, um, the first season. Uh, they had like a pretty big reference to Game of Thrones uh, after Game of Thrones just ended, and so yeah, um, I think people would in our world would like to visit Game of Thrones worlds. Um, personally, I would love to visit video game worlds, um, though some of them are su sound super super difficult to survive in. Um, I've never actually played Fallout, but I think Fallout world would be interesting. Um, It'd be interesting to go into a post-apocalyptic world. Uh, the Last of Us, oh, that would be so crazy. Uh, host zombies, host clickers, that would be terrifying um, and super fun. But also, there's no way to simulate that same sense of danger because because you know it's fake. Like in Westworld, if you're shot, like you don't get hurt. Whereas in The Last of Us, if the, the way you're normally killed is by other people or zombies, like, biting you. So how can they fake p things biting into you or... I don't know, just... I don't know. I don't think that would have worked, but I would love to see it and see their version of that. Um, I'm still hoping one day for The Last of Us to become, like, a VR somehow. <laughs> that would be so scary and so fun. Um, maybe Space World, like, join the crew of the Firefly... And, I mean, they wouldn't actually have to send people into space, because uh, it would cost a ton, but, I don't know, they could make windows on a shape, like, um, windows on a ship, like, uh, actually be screened, so it seems like you're going to space when you're not, 
And then when you land again, it's like a Western again, because Firefly is a space Western. It would be super fun to see, like, um, once every few months, Westworld welcomed in spaceships and everything, just to shake things up. Um, yeah, I miss Firefly too. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch of uh, worlds that I would love to go play in. Um, but yeah, four or more worlds that we don't know about at the moment, because uh, we only have Japan World and Westworld at the moment. And um, yeah, so far, enjoying the season um, after the first episode. I uh, just feel like I feel like the puzzle might not be as complicated this season as it was last season. Uh, though they could prove me wrong still. Um, but I'm going to give this an 8. Uh, not a super duper exciting start of the season, but I'm sure we'll build up to it. Uh, hard to outdo the masterpiece of a first season. Um... I'm curious where Armistice is. Um, no sign of her. Um, arm. Arm assist, because she's missing an arm. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, after last season, she just, like, cut off her arm to escape. And then, yeah, I'm I'm guessing she'll appear at a very important time. Uh, but I'm I'm sure they... I'm wondering if they, they're trying to make us forget about her for a bit until she pops back up later. Same with Elsie. Um, cause I, I'm not convinced she's dead out as whatsoever, but anyway, yeah. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like it really helps with this channel. Hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you guys next time. Bye friends.